the first item on the agenda is the presentation of the code of the president's JRCC for the hospital. Oh, we're March. Good evening. My name is Cadet Lieutenant Jay Smith. I'm in fourth grade this year, and after high school, I plan on going to college to study cybersecurity. Good evening. My name is Cadet Vincent Jocelyn Buseno. I'm a senior in high school, and my plan after high school is to enlist in the Navy. Good evening. I am Cadet Lieutenant Union Grade Gumball Perez. I'm in 11th grade, and after high school, I plan on going to medical school. Good evening, my name is Cadet Lieutenant Jenny Drake Jose Barraza. I'm a senior this year and I'm planning to high school during the United States today. Bye. Thank you all. Always good to remember and appreciate legendary grand elephants. Tonight is no exception. This is uh, Leslie Smith, though, who passed away this summer. She's the recipient of an honorary diploma. Her children are going to school graduate. She and her husband moved here from Atlanta in the 40s, and they quite a splash in the business world here in the world of conservation, natural resources, and philanthropy. It was Mrs. Smith Hall and her husband who donated 175 acres of their own property, which created the botanical garden of Gangster that is on their extended property. Uh, she and he were quite the Givers, movers, and shakers, you see her name in this town. We honor her and remember her. Next, we also lost Dr. Bill Ware this summer, a lifetime educator, coach, teacher, principal, and dean, a lifetime of uh, educational expertise. Also, uh, Quite a legend around this town, uh, being the husband of Mrs. Pamware. That's legendary in and of itself to be her husband. I don't say with any disrespect. Bill was quite a fellow, a uh, one year principal with us at Fair Street Elementary. Uh, most of his career here, uh, he spent a short time at Pamela Risa. 
one year of airstream you know, penetration, many years, 27 or eight years at Renau University, where he was the dean of the College of Education. Uh, it was most appropriate that uh, Dr. Ware's memorial service, the congregation paid tribute to this teacher's teacher, the congregation sang. Uh, the roll the roll is called piano. So we all signed that just for him. Thank you. All right, we have the citizens' comments. Do we have anybody from leadership hall? Board members, if you will, make sure your microphone on. I'd like to entertain the motion to adopt the agenda. Got a motion by Mr. Mitchell, second. Got a second by Mr. Smith. All those in favor? Motion carried. Motion to approve from on six and seven. All right, got a motion to approve the uh, minutes as well as the consent agenda by Mr. Smith. I hear a second. Got a second by Mr. Mitchell. All those in favor? Motion carries. Uh, Mrs. Pettit is going to go over the preliminary financials for June and July. Okay, I have a for you this evening. Uh, the second preliminary for June. And the results are um, we are at year to date revenues of 75.8 million. That's 100.1% of our budgeted revenues. Our expenditures are at 74.9 million, and that's 98.9 percent of our um, budgeted expenditures. Right now we are revenue over expenditures of 947,000. Uh, adding to our fund balance, our fund balance is sitting right now uh, slightly over 21. Yeah. Last year um, at this time of a fund balance was 19.3 and we were um, 101.6 percent collected of revenue and 100.4 of expenditures. So expenditures are less at this point, is it less than they were last year? And revenues were close to what they were last year. So we're still working um, to close June, so that's the analysis of this too. So we were at the bottom before um, at September. I'm assuming that the spots for the seats are active. Yes, the spots for seats um, for June are 899. All right, we have a motion to accept that financial motion to accept. All right, motion by Mr. Smith. Second, second by Mr. Porto, all those in favor. Motion changed, all right, July. Okay. <laughs> this is the first report on July. Um, July's uh, revenue, of course, is low, is 4.7% of the U.S. of the RTP revenues. Uh, expenditures are at 9.0%, which is uh, pretty normal. This time last year, we were at uh, 8.4%. But a lot of things in July, we don't have to pre pay such as insurance and that thing, so that kind of runs our expenditures up. First month. So that's um, anticipated. Uh, so our expenditures are already for the month are at 3.2%. And I want to apologize here. There is an error in the ending fund balance. Uh, the ending fund balance should be 17.8 million. So I will get that corrected in the year. 
correct uh, report out of the website. That should be 17.8 million in that first column. Also, I want to let uh, the board know that uh, the beginning of July, um, DASI has um, required some new standards with regards to the minimum requirements that's reported to the board. And one of those is uh, our purchase order and comfort list. So um, that is basically um, the balance of any uh, purchase orders that we have issued. At the end, we'll look at the end, what's left at the end of July. Uh, and that amount at the end of July was 2.2 million. Now, I know that seems quite huge, but basically that's made up of um, any purchase orders that we uh, put out at the beginning of the year, which was at, at this time was um, custodial services for maintenance and our modular uh, that we're listing at the middle school. That was pretty much what you saw. Made up with a few orders um, coming from the general fund. So. You would have still down to the swaps as well. Just out of curiosity, are we going to be writing this and covering this down? Or are we going to be actually yes, yes. So each month that the covers will be writing down and as a tax to pay monthly amount for those those two things, and then you know, it may vary as they're issuing. Where you can purchase the bridge, you just click on Lazy Brick Campaign, 
or scan QR code on the line. And then from there, it redirects you um, to the North Georgia Community Foundation page so that all of this uh, purchasing can be done through there. So we'll click on that. One. You'll see in this image that the bricks will be located in front of the new media cafeteria at Gainesville High School. So those bricks that are located there right now are, are blanks that will be replaced with the engraved bricks. There's a thousand bricks that were located at the front entrance of the high school that are going to be re-engraved. Those were purchased in the 1999-2000 um, era, and those bricks will be re-engraved exactly as they were. Um, unless we receive information from a community member that they would like to change, maybe we missed a, a typo years ago or, or um, some other uh, error that needs to be corrected. So we can correct those. We don't hear, they'll just be reprinted exactly as they were and replaced and combined with an additional 2,000 words that we don't sell as part of this campaign. Some questions? So if you'll just click really quickly, you'll see if you'll go down, we'll show up how the form works. So we've got some great pictures of Tommy here. This is where you just select $30 to purchase. And then from there, you fill in your contact information. The next screen is the payment window. And then the final screen is where you would enter your customization. And so, Payment is required before customization so that we don't have any confusion there. And once that payment is submitted, then you can enter here on um, each line, three lines, again, up to 17 characters, and um, submit from there. Again, thank you, Mr. Smith and Mr. Niles, of course, for, for making this project possible and the work that we're doing here. Some folks can do the old fashioned way back. Yes. Helping us out and writing a check. Absolutely. So checks can be uh, delivered to Gainesville High School, um, to central office, of course, but um, the, the preferred way would be to just take them directly to the North Georgia Community Foundation. Checks are to be written to the North Georgia Community Foundation with the memo of Gainesville High School Legacy Break Campaign. Um, but of course, that can be uh, walked across the street to the Community Foundation office very easily. But it's also easy to purchase them online. They're, we're, we're pushing this. We've already sold 75. We did a little small rollout last week. So I think it's going to go well. And we will uh, be selling for the end of the year. It's a calendar year. Any other questions, uh, Ms. Griffin? Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Uh, first of all, since all the principals are here, it's good to see the next time. Uh, so far, we've had a pretty good start to the school year. Friday was our first full day with all 8,000 of our students uh, in attendance. As you can imagine, the afternoon pickup time is always a little hectic. Uh, but the middle school where I was at, by 4.15, all the students and buses were gone. On the best days, that's 4 o'clock. So to be the first full day with everybody being 15 minutes late, that's fantastic. And by 515, all the students have been returned home and the buses were either on their way back or in uh, the bus bar. So just a, a great start. Uh, I got a lot of feedback about open house and the relationship building there, the staggered start and the feedback that we get from that as well, especially for the uh, students that are new to that school or just new to school in general. What I did realize Friday morning uh, when I was at the, the parents here for two days would get there at a certain time there was a lot more traffic trying to drop the child off on Friday. And so uh, you can tell that they were learning what uh, the regular days are going to look like. So one thing I do want to point out, uh, Eddie, if you go to our website, we, uh, last year, if you remember, we released a weekly COVID report that included COVID positives as well as the quarantines by school. That included in-school and out-of-school quarantines. Uh, this year, uh, we are starting it again. You can go ahead and click on it. And I'm not sure why it's showing up like that. But imagine the school is to the left. There we go. Uh, we'll be updating this every Friday afternoon or evening uh, based on the information that's available to us at that time. You can see last week we had five new positive COVID cases across the district. 
This may be the last time for quite a few weeks that it'll be that low. We do anticipate the numbers to pick up. Uh, and so we, we know that that's going to happen. Uh, we will continue to communicate with the community and with you as a board regarding any adjustments that we need to make to move into remote with certain classrooms or quarantine classrooms or mask mandates within certain schools. Uh, we just know that we'll continue to be flexible as we have been for the last uh, 18 months at this point. So just uh, information is there. We are not reporting the quarantine. The reason we are not is because we do have a number of employees and students that are vaccinated and they're not required to quarantine. So we felt like putting the quarantine information out does not represent the full, um, the full data that is out there. So we will be sticking uh, to the positive cases at this time. Any questions related to uh, back to school or um, COVID report before I move on to the other hours? Just a few items. Um, did we conduct a survey of the staff to see who would know? We have not yet. Um, we wanted to, we wanted to when we first got back, but we started to hear a lot more people saying they were going to get it. So we wanted some of that time to go by so the numbers should be as high as possible. And then when will we be uh, giving the enrolled counts? Is there, is there a certain date? Uh, the official formal count date would be in October, but we can get you probably, usually you want to be around day 15. Uh, we give our students the first 10 days to show up. And so then we start withdrawing kids after that. So um, we'll try and have that to you by September 7th or next week. Dr. Williams, can you also speak to the uh, COVID vaccine testing in that our school nurses are not doing the testing? So what options do the families have? Most of them are doctors. Uh, I believe there's still a spot at Allen Creek Soccer Complex where they are still doing testing on a daily basis. It's um, not daily anymore. It's certain, certain times of the day. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But Last I checked, the website was incorrect. So, we'll look at some of that information. Thank you, Dr. Anything else regarding those two items? All right, if you will, uh, Mr. Newman, pull up on that top left one there. There's a, uh, this. Banners is going to go on the website. Uh, we'll start to share some of this information. Uh, Mr. Lou Mayer is here with us this evening, uh, principal at GMS West Campus. One of the things that as we start to roll out, you know, a lot of information has been decided and a lot of information needs to be shared. And so we've worked with both Gangsman Middle School, uh, East Campus, as well as Mundyville and GEA regarding an opportunity uh, just open to our public. And we'll start promoting this uh, in late August, early September. The same information will be shared at all three of these informational sessions. It basically comes down to which one as a parent fits best into your schedule. So Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, you'll see one is provided each week, one the week on September 21st, one on September 29th, and one on October 7th. So what will be shared during that time? Attendance zone. We're looking at class size, we're looking at the process that we'll be using to identify administration, teachers, and so forth. Uh, really just give the parents an opportunity to meet Mr. Mayor uh, and just kind of relieve some of those anxieties about how we're going to do our best uh, to split current games and middle school into two separate campuses. The uh, third item here is this Thursday, uh, depending on weather. I hope that by the end it won't be too soggy out there. The community rally, uh, this is the, I believe, the third physical iteration of it. Uh, we were not able to do it last year. This is the third opportunity that we have the community pepper out to just kind of pull together a uh, time to kind of kick off the athletic season. Really, more than anything else, you can see the teams that will be there that will be introduced, and also uh, some face painting band performance, and then some truth in the bounce house will be available as well. It's always great to see the band kick it off and to fill in the gaps in between a lot of the other stuff. So, just kind of mark your calendars for Thursday between 6 and 8 p.m. That will happen at City Park. On Friday, uh, we will be releasing both Gainesville Middle School and Gainesville High School at 1 o'clock. Uh, you may have received a message earlier today, a little early, a little premature from when we intended to send it out later this evening at 7 o'clock. Uh, we're running into some logistical challenges, uh, both with transportation and with some personnel. 
regarding uh, an event that's happening that Friday evening before the jail classes. Uh, we are at the mercy of when they set the time, and because of the time, it's creating some major issues for us logistically. Uh, so what we're doing is adjusting our schedule on Friday, where elementary schools will still be released at the same time, no change, uh, but games in middle school and games in high school will release at 1 p.m. So in other words, the buses will go there first. Those children will be able to be home before their younger siblings get home from the typical uh, elementary Friday release. And then the last item, uh, we have rescheduled and no longer ribbon cutting, but more of an open house opportunity for the next study center. We'll do it on uh, September the 7th prior to the uh, board work session that we'll have at 5 30. So we'll be following up with some of this information given to you uh, in, a, in a different format. We just wanted to give you an update on a few of the things that we have going throughout the community. A busy last two weeks, a busy week coming up, with just a lot of great things going on within the city school system. Any other questions? Speaking of advanced studies, that's a nice segue. We get the stay right up here to discuss the CTA local plan. It could be a hard one to <laughs> Because we receive CTAE or career, technical, and agricultural education plans, we are required to submit a local plan to the Georgia Department of Education. That plan also requires your approval. There are nine requirements for receiving CTAE funds. You can see those on the outline below. We incorporate those all throughout our CTAE program. However, in addition to those requirements, we also have um, some additional goals that um, we'll be looking at the data and we come up with those and how they best fit our system. For this year, they include to continue working through the items in the multi year workforce development plan. This plan is heavily focused on what our our community industry partners needs. And this year, that focus will be on the healthcare pathway and helping our students lead GHS certifications that will help them to be work ready. Um, we will also be incorporating employability skills lessons K 12. You and I may take those for granted because we've been in the workforce for a long time, but you can never start those too early. Um, some of those include um, your communication skills, motivation, and initiative. Leadership, dependability, following directions, teamwork, patience, adaptability. Um, at the elementary level, those will be taught by the counselors and some other staff members through lessons. And at the middle and high schools, um, they will be incorporated into the CTA course standards. We will also continue to equip the classrooms at the Advanced Study Center. And as you guys know, this is the way our fiscal year runs. You know, a lot of those funds have not been made available until July. And so we'll, we'll, we're starting that process now. Um, we'll also continue to develop the computer science pathway. We have a team that has already been working on that. And so they will be outlining those courses um, in that sequence uh, from elementary, middle, and high throughout the rest of this year. And with the opening of the second middle school, it is very important that we ensure the middle school CTA course offer, offerings align with the high schools. So I'm happy to provide any more information. Yeah. And some of the information regarding the middle school piece is going to be provided with information sessions. The workforce development plan uh, was what we did in conjunction with the Carl Benson Institute of Government and it finished up in 2019. So this is just a continuation of planning that was done a couple years ago. Any other questions? Two things. Uh, okay. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I understand that only a Portion may be about half of the CTAE program moved into the new advanced studies building. Is that correct? They uh, it's going to be engineering and technology, they may be consumer science, construction, manufacturing, and healthcare. Okay. And where then are the remaining uh, CTAE personnel and forces? They will be the first school in the three story group. So right now they're dispersed throughout uh, the high school. Uh, okay. They will be the first floor of the new building. Yeah. Campus. Okay. Honestly. Secondly, let me repeat a concern that I have had just for several years. It's the A. That in, in my opinion, we are deficient in the A. And this is an agriculture town, agribusiness, agri-marketing, but I, I believe there are opportunities for us to advance our A. 
So that's just a personal thought based on this. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So we need to oh, make a motion to uh, adopt. I'm going to adopt. Motion by Mr. Smith. Second by Mr. Mitchell. Any questions? All those in favor? Motion to use. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, last time, any discussion on it? Yes, ma'am. Our, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Our uh, new construction is drawing uh, lots of attention in the city and beyond, and it is drawing uh, lots of visitors, some VIP, uh, high profile visitors on to the campus. Uh, it might behoove us to designate a protocol host. Whenever a VIP is scheduled, um, there are lots of good reasons to reach out uh, to us first and to others in the community when we have a VIP visitor and a protocol host can that will certainly be helped to uh, do that. And this, this for now, it applies to the high school, but soon it will apply to Kansas Middle School West and wherever else we're going to deal. So, I just want to plant that seed, please. Okay. I'll give you Mr. Green and we'll discuss it soon. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. You have a second. Thank you. You have a second, Mr. Mitchell. All those in favor. Good evening, everyone.